All right, I've taken it completely out of the case now so I can work on it efficiently. Um, there seems to be a problem with the, uh, with the power supply. The way this thing works is that it's either battery powered or AC powered. And the AC powered is just a charge circuit. Circuit. It will not operate without batteries. The batteries act as capacitors as well. So, But the uh, batteries check out okay. And I believe the problem is with the uh, DC to DC converter. Um, you start out with somewhere around 12 volts with the two battery packs, and then it runs into an oscillator that then uh, goes through a transformer. Um, so it, it changes the DC of the battery into AC, and then it goes through a transformer, and then it goes through regular regular power supply. So we can, we can sort of take a look at this up here. Let me rearrange the camera. All right, so here's the AC that comes in. It gets rectified. It goes into the batteries. There's two batteries in series, so it ends up being 12 volts. Um, and then the 12 volts runs into uh, uh, into this section, which is an oscillator. So this oscillates, and then these are the push-pull onto the uh, coils of the transformer. So it's uh, you know positive, negative, positive, negative. Um, and then it gets uh, turned into the voltages that you need. It turns into plus 5, minus 5. Uh, and then there's a section here that gives you a thousand volts, uh, 65 volts. So when I first got the instrument, uh, it didn't work and I started measuring some voltages. I did get 65 volts and I did get the plus and minuses and then I, I measured like minus 900 volts and, and then it stopped working. And now it's just giving me really, really awful voltages and, um, this section here is not working well. Um, there's nice, uh, probably hard to see on camera here, but there's nice waveforms on different points here. It's kind of difficult to figure out where, the, where they mean these points to be. They should have had little arrows, but, um, I think I can figure out where the, where, the, where they mean. Um, but anyway, you should get a nice square wave out of these, uh, out of these two, um, uh, transistors. And I'm not getting a square wave at all. Uh, when I first looked at it, I was getting a, uh, a ringing high and then a ringing low and then a ringing high. There was like a high volt, high uh, um, frequency modulated on top of it. And then it started to kind of oscillate it here and then oscillate, it, it was just goofy. And now it doesn't seem to, this transistor seems to be getting hot. It, it It's just weirdness. Um, so let me kind of show you a little bit about the, uh, the PC board. Uh, so these two transistors here are the big push poles, and um, watch this—they're on socket, so I can remove the I can remove the IC now uh, or the uh, transistor now. Uh, there's an interesting point about that. Um, this one has been soldered down, and this transistor has been soldered down. It was on a socket as well, so both of these were on sockets, but now they've been. It's kind of globbed in there with some really, really poor soldering skills. <laughs> and they look just awful. And uh, this is the one that's getting hot. At one point, I touched this transistor and wiggled it in its socket, and the waveform changed. So I think he may have been on to something, is that these connections are not very mm, stable. And one of the little thin wires here looked like it was about to break, so I resoldered it. And I went ahead and pulled out this, I pulled out both of these transistors and put them on a, che a tester, and they test okay. But when I pulled this little guy out, his, his leads were completely black. They had completely oxidized. So that's probably why they went ahead and soldered it over on this side. So I'm, I think what I'm going to do is I think I'm going to just desolder this entire section and uh, clean it up and make sure all the transistors are good, put them back in. Maybe, maybe it'll become stable. I'm not sure. Okay, so I've reworked this whole section here. I have these, um, these little uh, gold uh, sockets, um, one, pin, one pin sockets, and I've, I've put those uh, where all of these transistors are. So they all have brand new sockets and they're all gold and everything is making good contact now. There was some pretty dodgy things in there. Um, and now it just doesn't work at all. <laughs> so these transistors aren't turning on at all, which means 
uh, most likely it's these two little guys here not oscillating so they should oscillate and then pull these guys um, so I'm not sure which one's not oscillating and why it's not oscillating um, maybe there's still a cold solder joint or something in there uh, there are some capacitors in here that maybe I should replace like that one there uh, I, I don't know yet so anyway um, yeah so nothing uh, nothing's going on now these these collectors are high but the um, emitters are never getting pulled down so nothing is oscillating all right so I found a cold solder joint not cold solder joint it just was not filling in very well um, and so I fixed that so let me show you this uh, you, you can you can uh, just look at the collector of these transistors because the collector is the case so uh, I will I will show you what's going on now I'm actually getting a, a waveform I'll take a couple pictures here to make it look better um, so it looks as though it um, is oscillating now but it has that ringing that I described earlier so um, I kind of back to square one I've kind of fixed all the things that need fixing and I think it's back to probably the best it's been in a while and now I need to figure out why is it have that high frequency oscillation the the big excursions are correct the timing is correct and everything and so now I need to figure that one out so let me show you the schematic here I haven't really entirely got this circuit figured out yet but let me show you all right we have uh, a, a nine volt zener here and uh, I think that just regulates the uh, voltage um, let's see it would keep some voltage maybe that feeds back into the other side oh I know what that is yeah that's just a uh, that goes to the that goes to the meter so this is just a, a biasing biasing for the meter and it tells you if you have enough battery or not through that and then we have this um, one transistor here I think that does the oscillating so it has this feedback from the emitter into the base and it's got this 10 volt zener across a one microfarad capacitor so it's going to charge up until it hits that 10 volts and then it'll discharge through the zener and I think that's what's doing the uh, oscillation so I thought well maybe one of these di uh, capacitors is bad and it's leaking high current or high frequency geez can't talk today um, and this one measures one microfarad and this one measures 0.47 microfarads so those are measuring okay but I'm still getting this weird weirdness out here I thought for fun maybe I'll put some ferrite beads on the bases of these things but I don't think that's I don't think that's what I need to do I think the error is someplace else maybe this uh, Maybe this transistor is just a bit too fast or a bit too leaky or something. I don't know. Maybe this capacitor, although it's a solid capacitor, it's not electrolytic. I did measure this one. This one's really, really old school tantalum. The one microfarad is tantalum as well. The 0.47 is looks like it's tantalum as well there are different constructions this the these two are dipped tantalum this one looks like it's axial tantalum yeah i'm not quite sure where to go next but uh let's stare at it some more all right well you can see it's working uh so i can change the speed change the size um so how did i fix it i should have filmed it i'm sorry i was busy with some other things and I uh, got excited when I found a fix for this thing and I just buttoned it back up again um, but the, it's a pretty boring fix so let me show you what's going on here uh, so this is the oscillator and it bangs these two transistors on and off that runs the transformer and uh, these were banging on and off but then they were ringing there was a ringing there somewhere so um, whenever there's a ringing somewhere I think oh well there must be high frequency that's leaking through somewhere and capacitors can fix that uh, 
ferrite beads can fix that. I didn't think it was fast enough for a ferrite bead, but I tried anyway. I put some ferrite beads on these on these bases. Didn't do anything at all. Um, and I thought, okay, well, uh, I need to try out some capacitor. So I stuck a capacitor here, stuck a capacitor here, stuck a capacitor in different places. Uh, I thought maybe this 100 microfarads was dead. I put another 100 microfarads in parallel with it. Didn't do anything. Tried and tried and tried and tried and tried. And then um, I looked and there's this uh, 2200 picofarad in series with a 130 ohms that looks like it's there to catch some high frequency spikes. And I thought, okay, well, maybe this is dead. So I, I put a, a, par a parallel the capacitor across that, didn't fix anything. I thought, ah, oh, it's really, really weird. And then I was just kind of poking around with different values and things. And uh, like I said, the top of these two cans are the collectors. And I, I put my favorite capacitor, my favorite capacitor saves the day, <laughs> a 0 0.01. I put that across these two cans and poof, it magically worked. That, that waveform that was up and ringing and down and ringing went up, stayed up, went down, stayed down. Everything looked great. Um, and while I was holding that capacitor on there and admiring my waveform, I looked and the, the CRT had lit up. Uh, so the power supply had come up. This thing's come on pretty fast. Um, and so, uh, yeah, that was it. So I just soldered it in there. Now it is, it is a capacitor across an AC signal sort of rounding off some edges and stuff. It, it probably does need that 130 ohms resistor in there to be completely reliable. <laughs> maybe the 130 ohm resistor went bad or maybe there was a trace that went bad or something. Uh, but anyway, I put it in there, it works and it's not dying. It's not drawing any more current than it was. Um, and uh, if it ever flakes out, I'll know exactly where to go and fix it again. So <laughs> anyway, I'm calling it quits. I'm, I'm getting ready for a trip. I'm going on a, on a vacation. So uh, I wanted to sort of get this out of my mind while I was on the vacation. I wanted to crank it out. So anyway, there you go. Uh, it is super cool. Uh, it's got, uh, let's show you some stuff here. All right, so this is the intensity knob. Uh, this is a variable volts per division. Uh, this is horizontal sweep change. I think uh, they call it magnification, makes it bigger. Here's position up and down and position left and right. And so, yeah, all of the all the knobs work. There's a power knob, there's an internal triggering, external triggering, which comes through this little banana jack here. I have it on DC triggering. Um, it wasn't auto triggering correctly. This little adjustment here for auto trigger that I tweaked and now it works fine. Um, so yeah, there you go. A uh, Tektronix 211 oscilloscope, single channel. Um, I don't know. I think MSI Dog will enjoy it.